Hello YouTube fam, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Tina and I make videos on lifestyle, home, and DIY projects every single week. It feels so good to film again. Over the weekend, I actually took a trip over to Arizona and that was just so much fun. So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw a couple of pictures from my trip there. I went to Sedona and it was just so beautiful. We stayed at a beautiful Airbnb and hiked during the daytime, but at nighttime, you could see the stars so well. Living in major cities like Chicago and LA, you don't really get to see that stars brightly. So that night, I was just in love with just staring up at the sky. And I actually even saw a shooting star so that was just so magical. That was like my second time seeing one. So basically the projects in today's video are inspired by that trip and just the starry night as well as celestial things. And if you guys have been watching the channel for a while, you know that I love making projects based on the sun and the moon and the stars. So today we're doing some painting as well as a clay project and I hope that you guys really like these. So without further ado, let's jump into the first project. Hello from voiceover Tina. I'm starting this project with a lid that I've been holding on for a while now, and you'll notice it has paint on it just because I had other plans for it, but I thought it would make the perfect base for this project, so that's what I'm using. If you don't already have a similar object at home, feel free to just cut out a circle as your base, or create whatever shape you'd like for your incense holder. So the first thing that I'm doing is rolling out a piece of clay, and I'm just creating it into a slab just large enough to fit my circle base. Next, I'm using the circle to create a crescent moon shape, and using this base will ensure that my moon fits it exactly. I featured this lid in a previous video, and I asked you guys for suggestions for it since I had two of them, and a lot of you guys said to create a moon or a sun with it, so that's exactly what we're doing today. And I actually found my old clay tools from ceramics class in college, and these are just so handy and super affordable. I will link a similar set to what I have down below, but if you plan on working with clay a lot, I would totally recommend grabbing some tools to help you out. Now I'm taking my clay and water mixture, also known as slip, and I'm using that to smooth everything out. I'm also gonna make sure that I round out my edges a little bit and I'm just taking my time to shape everything out. And if at any point you need to add more clay to the pieces like I did, just go ahead and score it, add some slip, and just smooth it out to make it look as seamless as possible. Next, I rolled out another slab of clay to create our star shapes, and I'm using a pointy tool just to sketch it out first, and then I'm gonna create these little sparkle shapes. I think these just look so cute, and they just need a little bit of molding by hand to get it just right. I ended up creating them in different sizes just to add a little bit more dimension to the piece. Okay, so for this clip, you're gonna see me cutting some hatch marks into the base with an X-Acto knife, and I thought that I could just slip and score this to the base to make it stick, but lo and behold, that did not work. I was trying to experiment with this, but it definitely did not stick on. So just ignore that until I actually glue it on later on in this tutorial. But if you're working with a clay base, you can totally do the skip and score method and the pieces will stick on totally fine. I then rolled up some clay balls to represent more stars, and I think this added in some interest and really filled up the negative space nicely. And for the largest ball, I'm actually going to poke a hole in it, and this is gonna be our incense holder. And keep in mind that air dry clay actually shrinks as it dries, so make sure that you're making the hole a little bit larger than you need it to be. So here's how my piece is looking, and I'm just gonna let it dry completely. And this is when I realized that the scoring technique I tried would not work, so I just removed it from the base and I let it dry on its own. And I've actually gotten many questions asking how to avoid cracking, and the best way to do that is just to make sure that your piece is not stuck on a surface. Make sure that you actually lift the pieces up from the surface that you're working on, and since the clay is shrinking as it dries, make sure that it's drying evenly on all the sides. And you'll actually see here that the moon cracked a little bit as it was drying, and that's because it was stuck on the circle piece. So what I did was just remove it from the base piece, and I used a bit of slip and a thick paste consistency to fill in the crack, and I smoothed it out as best as I could. It also really helps to add a little bit more slip, but this time use a more watery consistency right on top of it, and it creates a super smooth surface. <laughs> Thank you. 
And now I'm gonna let everything dry down even more until it's ready to be adhered to the base piece. To glue everything on, I'm just using regular old Mod Podge. And I read online that you can use a PVA glue, so this works out perfectly as well as any other school glue. But again, if you're creating your base piece out of air dry clay, you can totally skip this step. So when I tried to glue the moon down, it actually cracked again. And this is because the bottom was not perfectly flat for me to push it on top of the base. So it cracked in multiple places and I just tried to smooth everything out and put it back together again. And originally I used this lid as a base because I really liked that it was a perfect circle. But honestly, if I were to do this project again, I would just create my own base with air dry clay and avoid this altogether. I wanted to keep this in the video and just show you guys that sometimes things just don't go according to plan, but you can always just take it as a learning lesson and maneuver it and make it work for you. I was super determined not to give up on this piece and I think it turned out pretty great in the end. After that was done, it was time to paint everything and I'm going for a classic deep blue background and gold for my moon and stars. I'm using acrylic paint for the background and I mixed in a navy blue as well as a touch of black for this. I give the background two coats before adding in the gold and for my gold paint I just use my liquid gold leaf and this is my favorite and this also took two coats to cover completely. And in a little bit more interest, I'm gonna paint on some details with a fine liner brush. And I'm using a white paint on here. I just painted in some leaves and added some other whimsical and celestial inspired doodles. Once everything was dry, for the last step, I just sealed it off with some Sculpey Glaze in a glossy finish. This classic color palette adds so much color and contrast to any space, but of course you can create this project in any color scheme that you'd like. You guys already know that I can't get enough of celestial inspired decor, and even though we ran into some challenges along the way, in the end I love how everything came out, and now I can burn my incense in style. For this next project, I'm starting by creating a super dark blue and I'm mixing navy blue and black. I want it to be almost black, but not quite, so this color was perfect for the background. Then on my canvas, I'm going to give it two coats of this dark navy color. And when it comes to using a darker color, I really wanna make sure that the paint is worked into the canvas so that none of the white is peeking through. And don't forget to cover the sides too. Okay, once that was dry, I took my pencil to sketch out my constellation, and I would highly suggest looking at a reference photo to do this. I'm a Cancer, so luckily this constellation is pretty easy to map out. Then I mixed white paint with some water to make it a little bit more watery, but I didn't want to thin out the paint too much, especially since we're putting it over a black color, so having it a little bit more on the thicker side is ideal. And with this color, I'm just gonna flick it right onto the canvas. And I did a variety of techniques, so I used my palette knife to just flick it on. And I also used a brush by tapping it onto my finger and also flicking the bristles. And this creates a splatter effect onto the canvas, creating a starry look. <laughs> And in the parts that had a little bit more negative space, I also took a paintbrush and just dotted some stars onto there. After I was happy with that, I went in with my paintbrush again and I just added little points to the dots to create a star shape. And I made each one a little bit different than the other, so you'll see that I'm adding some lines as well as little triangle shapes to these circles. Next up, I'm painting in the stars that are part of the constellation and I'm making them a little bit larger and here I'm using liquid gold paint. 
I just love this stuff and I think it looks really nice against the dark background and it also adds some shine and gives it more of a high-end look. I also added in some dots and stars in the background and I chose not to do the splatter technique this time since I wanted to control exactly where I wanted these stars to be. This paint is almost like a nail polish so if you splatter it and get it on your furniture it's super hard to get out so I would recommend not splattering it. To tie it all together, I'm going to paint in the dotted line to connect the constellations. And again, I would definitely recommend to look at a photo for reference. After this step, you can totally customize it even more by adding in some simple calligraphy or even poking holes where the stars are and adding in twinkle lights. I think that would look super cute, but I just left it more on the simple side. Let me know in the comments how you guys would customize this piece, but I think it looks beautiful either way. And here's the finished DIY. I think it looks so magical and really reminds me of that Starry Night in Sedona. What I love most about celestial theme pieces is that you can really customize it to your own horoscope or even to what the night sky looked like on a specific date for a special occasion. I think this would make such a great gift for someone or to create as a sentimental piece in your home. So those are the projects for today's video. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. I really can't choose between the two. I'm so happy that I have an incense holder now just because that's something that my family burns at home and I'm really glad that I have that in my apartment now. But overall, I think that both projects came out so cute and I'm also so happy with how that painting came out. It was so easy to do and I really hope that you guys try this one out at home. If you do, make sure that you tag me on Instagram so that I could see it and leave it some love. I will also leave a few of your projects on the screen because you guys have been tagging me. You guys are so amazing and it just makes me so happy that these videos can inspire some projects. So thank you for sharing with me and also thank you so much for watching and supporting this channel. If you like this video, make sure that you give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below for new videos every single week. I post on Thursdays and Sundays. So make sure that you tune back in on Sunday for another DIY video. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys all so much for watching. Stay inspired and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!